Welcome to Epic Conquerors. Your host, Dr. Judy Bauer and Chad Smanjack. You are epic. Everything is possible in Christ. The battle is real. The victory is assured. Welcome to all our Epic Conquerors, and thank you for joining Mama J and myself, Chad, on the Epic Conquerors podcast. Today, we're going to dive into Acts, and uh, we're going to see just how powerful the Holy Spirit worked through Paul. But before we get into that, let's uh, see how Mama J is doing today. Mama J, what's going on? <laughs> I tell you what, I love this passage because walking in the power of the Holy Spirit really charges me up. I just love it. Um, I've been blessed since 1972 to be walking in the power of the Holy Spirit and see miracle after miracle. So I think what we're going to talk about today is going to be loads of fun. So I'll kick it right off, Mama Jen, and I'll start okay. with reading the, the actual verse of scripture that this devotional is based on. Okay. And it's Acts 19, verse 11. It's such a powerful scripture. It says, and God gave Paul the power to do unusual miracles so that even when his handkerchiefs or parts of his clothes were placed upon sick people, they were healed. Wow. And any demons within them came out. I mean, when, when we go back to that, Mama Jane, we look at that just, you know, from, from a perspective of today's experience as a Christian in the modern church or, you know, new believers that are just coming to, you know, realize you know, how amazing God is. But I mean, just think back then that the Holy Spirit worked through Paul in such a powerful way that just, just his handkerchief placed on someone would heal them. Yeah, I've seen that happen so many times, praying over things as my husband and I pastored for 25 years, we would often pray over what we would call prayer claws. And we would have little scraps of fabric, if you will. And we would anoint them with oil, lay hands on them and pray for them. And then people would take them and send them, mail them to family members that were sick or whatever, or they would place it under their pillow while they slept or what have you. And we would see so many miracles happen, just like Paul saw in that day, just as Basically, it's not that there's any healing power, uh, obviously, in, in the material or in the anointing oil or in anything, but it just was a, a tangible point of reference, if you will, to do a faith act, and then God brought the miracle. I brought the miracle. Yeah. That's it. And, and, that's, and that's so important for us to, to understand today right it's always god that brings the miracle god yeah. that brings the results yeah you know, like we always spoke about it's really not you know sometimes because we live in this world that's so results orientated you know mm -hmm. we always feel like oh man it's it's my job to do that and it's that but that's not really what it what it's about right and we'll, we'll go through that as we go yeah. through that. there's a lot of things that god asks us to do are seem maybe sometimes even silly or insignificant or like really god i have to do that but when you do that by faith and step out, and take that action and whatever it was you felt he quickened you to do, boom, a miracle happens. And you stand there just in amazement at, wow, God, <laughs> you know, because what we did was so seemingly insignificant, unable to produce anything. But God takes that faith and he multiplies it into a miracle. It's fantastic. And I think sometimes it's so important to be like you see with, with Paul, um, you know, these miracles and, and many others, miracles are happening all the time. But, you know, some like and we think, well, well, you know, sometimes we're trying to, we're praying for something and we're looking to get it done and we're praying for the miracle. But sometimes when you take a step back, a lot of the times it's because God can't really allow you to believe that you're the one creating that miracle, right? So, oh, no, we would get a big head and a nano. <laughs> could you imagine? So sometimes that's what, like, it's clear in the scriptures. It says your job is just to walk out, be obedient and walk in faith. I'll take care of the results. That's right. I think a lot of that's exactly what you said. Could you imagine if we started to do boom, 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 and you weren't prepared or ready for that particular thing? You'd be like, look at me. Yeah. And before well, you know, you've it, seen that be the downfall of many a uh, minister in the past or a believer when God does use them. Yeah. To bring forth his power and then they forget to give the glory to God. And they start thinking they're all that in a bag of chips, you know, so 
then God has to sort that out. And so it's quite a journey that they then walk with God. Yeah. Um, yeah so we want to be careful not to. Well, like, like you said, like in, in, in the world today, it's like, you know, people get success and money and how that corrupts them in, yeah. in, in, you know, in the Christian community, you get God uses you in these mighty ways and it can corrupt you as well. Yeah. Yeah. And so, well, with that said, <laughs> we're moving right along. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, Paul experiences God's power flowing through him in so many ma- amazing ways. I mean, obviously, you can go through the scripture and you can pick up so many different times that that happens. You know, how can we as today in the, mo- in, in the modern day, how can believers access this power in their lives? You know, obviously. Good question. You know, it's there was a power and it's the same power that was working yeah. through Paul that works through us. Yeah. So how do modern day today in today's society how do you access that power well what i've learned in my lifetime with the lord is you have to constantly be aligning yourself to listening for god's voice to speak to you because he will quicken you with a little small nudge in your inner man and your knower your knower will know that he's quickening you to step out on that or you'll read a scripture or hear a message preached or something and He'll make something stand out to you that that's what he would like you to do. Uh, sometimes it's just the most insignificant thing, but it's just learning to just be quick and to hear and obey whatever that little nudging is. And when you do that, Chad, then you're walking actually in partnership with God. I mean, imagine that on a bigger scale to think about the privilege of being able to partner with God. Oh my goodness, how amazing is that? <laughs> I mean, if you that, would let us do that, you know. I mean, we don't. Sometimes I think we just take it for granted, right? We don't really even think about the gravity of what you just said, Mama Jay. It's like you know, and I'm just using a a, a worldly example. If yeah. someone said, "Well, you could partner with, let's say, Jeff Bezos," right? Yeah, yeah. And you're like, "Oh, yo, yeah. Jeff Bezos! Yeah. Wow, I get to partner with him." You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. so overwhelming. Yeah. But you, as a Christian, get to partner with God Almighty, King yeah, of yeah. Kings, Lord of Lords, every day. Mm. We should be going like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you want to be quick then to hear whatever he wants to tell you to do because you know that he's backing you up, right? So whatever the outcome is, that's his responsibility and he's really good at it. <laughs> it's kind of like yeah. I think of how in the natural, sometimes a, a certain occupations, they'll have a bring a daughter or bring a son to work day and let your child kind of go through a day with you to see how, you know, you, a real world job looks like kind of thing we get to have god takes us as his daughter his son to work every day with him you know and see how to operate in a god kind of way yeah and 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 then on top of that he said he says well you just need to do this part of it which is believe Believe yeah do this and i'll take care of the results so don't worry about that you're like yeah what kind that's the best partnership you can ask for (laughs) yeah so i think the thing about it is and this one scripture like that talks about they didn't have ears to hear what the spirit was saying and jesus sometimes rebuked him and said you guys are dull of hearing you know because he kept trying to explain the things of the kingdom but he said you have dull ears And I think for us as Christians, so important, epic conquerors, that we develop an ear to hear what the spirit is saying and really develop that uh, pattern of listening on purpose. And I love that scripture uh, in Deuteronomy 6, verse 4, where it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength. And that word here in Hebrew is Shema. And Shema means one who listens on purpose in order to obey. So it's kind of like the description of like a handmaiden would look to her mistress to catch her eye. Like if she needed something, she would give her handmaiden a look and she would immediately know what that look meant and would jump up to go take care of her mistress's desire and wait on her hand and foot in that kind of sense that was the culture of that era but in that same sense that's how we should be towards god is that we have that kind of a mindset of who 
Ooh, I get to work with God. You know, what does he want? What can I do to help make his day, you know, and make things work out the way he wants it to in the earth, thy kingdom come, thy will be done kind of thing. We get to do all that, but we have to train ourselves to look towards his eye to see what is he wanting us to do so that we can partner with him. Wow. That's beautiful, Mama Jay. You know, and, and that, that brings it back to in this, in the devotional, it says, align yourself to listen for God's heart, for his instructions. It says, this happens as you learn to discern his voice and act upon it by faith. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, how do we today, like, how do we align ourselves to hear God's instructions? Like, you know, just basically giving some instruction, just put it out there for our, for our epic conquerors, like, because these are such important things, right? Because you, you got, there's certain things you have to do to be able to align yourself to yeah. hear those instructions. I found it so fascinating when I studied this word Shema, because it's a word that means a lot to me. But um, when they would, the Israelites would say this scripture, when they recited, hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord, when they recited that part, knowing that here meant one who listens on purpose in order to obey, they would close their eyes when they said that part. And then when they said the rest of the recitation, of, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength, they would open their eyes. And so the significance of that was so fascinating to me because the reason they would close their eyes, Chad, is so that then they would just be closed off from all the distraction of the world and just focus in on paying attention to their spirit, their inner man, to be able to hear God or to feel that nudge of the spirit so that then they could open eyes and go out and do, you know, love the Lord by obeying what he had told them to do. So I thought that was really a fascinating thing to understand that that's their, the way that they recite this passage is they close their eyes and then they open their eyes. And that was real interesting. <laughs> wow, that is, yeah. And when you're going through that process as well, Mama Jay, how do you, you know, one of the things that, and I think it just, you know, for me, sometimes it's like, you always have like, how do I know that I'm hearing from God mm -hmm. and I'm not just hearing these voices in my head or it's not my flesh that's taking over. Like for you, how do you, how do you discern that? <laughs> I don't know. The devil's never going to tell me to do something good for somebody. <laughs> a great way to filter through it oh if if i feel like it's something that's good and it's going to bless somebody or it's helpful then i'm just going to go do it because i can't nice. lose i mean you know that's a god attribute and the enemy's never going to tell me to do something and i'm not even going to tell myself necessarily to go do something for somebody else i mean but even if i did if it was yeah. my own voice still if it's going to bless somebody then just go for it yeah nice. you can't lose Perfect. because whatever you do you do it as unto the lord so in that you bless the Lord, he said, then he'll bring it back, given it shall be given, multiplied back to you. So whatever we do is a gesture of grace or blessing for someone else. The scripture said, when you do it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. So whatever we go about doing good, that's what Jesus did. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed. So any thought that's towards helping someone or blessing someone or being kind to someone, that ain't coming from old Slewfoot, <laughs> the old snake <laughs> in the grass, that turkey. So that's how I judge it. That's a beautiful way to put it because I think you just summed it up right there. It's don't overthink it, right? Yeah. That, because we do. We, we so have it, we overthink it. We're like, well, is this one right? Is he really saying this? And you just summed it up. If it's good, do it. Yeah. If it's edifying. Well, if to lose, yeah. Yeah. So beautiful. At the very, very least, you're going to feel better for having done something nice for somebody yeah you know yeah. It feels that, good. that's actually the that that's the most simplistic way i've ever heard someone put that i love it don't ever don't ever think it if it's good do it yeah if it's gonna help someone if it's gonna edify them if it's gonna build yeah. them up go ahead yeah just go for it and this idea of closing your eyes like when you say here oh israel in other words you're purposely focusing your attention on just you and god being alone kind of in a real personal space intimate space which then triggered me to remember how Paul, in his journeys as he traveled, Apostle Paul, he was a tent maker. And so picturing a tent maker, you think of somebody lugging around all this canvas, heavy canvas, and big old stakes that just stick on the ground and build a tent. But yep. that's not what that referred to. When I discovered that, I was so fascinated as well. But 
Paul being a rabbi, he had the authority then as a rabbi to uh, make prayer claws or prayer shawls, excuse me. And the prayer shawl, as we know, the Hebrew people, uh, when it was time to pray, the hero Israel, they would put the prayer shawl up over their head and close themselves off with that prayer shawl. And that was their tent or their tent of meeting, as you hear it described in the Old Testament in the Holy of Holies and all that was the tent of meeting where you went to go meet with God on purpose to be intimate with God. So I can picture Paul, then obviously he just had that thin uh, thread and needles and whatnot, and he could make a uh, fabric, make the prayer shawl that the rabbis would use and the is Israelites would use when they wanted to commune with God. And that prayer shawl, they would just put it up over their head and it would create this vacuum of space where it was just you and God alone. You didn't see anybody else in your peripheral. So you could focus on listening to God. And so as a tent maker, that's what he was doing, giving people opportunity to go meet with God in a personal, intimate way. Ooh, I love it. Wow. Yeah, and that, I mean, that, and, and like you said back then, that was a really important part of like society, tent maker. Because yeah. I mean, you lived in tents. <laughs> and I think that's why sometimes when we pray, we like put our hands over our face like that. We're just closing out the world. Yeah. yeah. And just focusing on listening to our spirit, listening to God Locking and shutting everything else off. And I think that's the key uh, for having unusual miracles happen because sometimes in our daily routine, the littlest things, if we would look at them in the right way, we would see like that is miraculous. Hmm. Like when I was coming home from my trip, uh, my daughter's friend's daughter picked me up from the airport and I've never spent time with this girl. She's 18 years old. And I was just talking to her just flowing by the spirit, I could tell, and she was soaking it up like a sponge. So when my daughter came home, I was telling her what I had shared with this girl, and she goes, Mom, you have no idea, but she said this weekend, one of the things that you just told me about that you shared with her is something that actually happened to her this weekend, and you have no idea how that was such a timely word for her, and this girl's not a Christian uh, or anything like that. So I just thought, you know, that is an unusual miracle, really. But sometimes we don't think of it that way. We just think we're yammering away. <laughs> but God was bringing a healing moment to this girl because she was severely wounded by her father that over that weekend. I didn't know that. But in just a story that I was sharing about something that happened in my childhood, it just brought a release from her. I could see it. So that, to me, those are unusual miracles that happen. God is using us without our awareness mm -hmm. and yet when we look back and we see it we go wow that was wow. the holy spirit you know and so to give glory to god for those things as though it were the parting of the red sea i mean for her it was probably it just released her from harboring this pain this wound that she had received and so for her that it was important you know yeah wow that leads me right into the next part that i wanted to touch on in this devotional where it says um he waits on you to step out in faith, to speak his word over the situation and to expect the outcome to manifest by his mighty power. You're not responsible for the results. So, I'm, I mean, I'm, what you were just sharing right now, it's so amazing. Like there it is in real life happening. You just stepped out in faith, did what you needed to do. God put the whole thing together, he orchestrated the whole, you know, event to take place because he knew what this person needed and you just delivered what you know to deliver and God took care of the rest yeah fantastic and that same day Chad at four in the morning the Lord wakes me up and tells me to uh, reach out to a friend that's been going through some tough stuff and at that very moment the scammer dude was trying to scam him and it was just a miraculous divine intervention I mean especially for me to wake up at four in the morning <laughs> But again, so it's two instances just right there in one day, seemingly insignificant. But for those people, it was the set free that they needed. You know, that's a miracle. So that's yeah. living in partnership with God, like we talked. It's so fun. That so that and then that's going to lead me to my next part. That Ooh, I, to I tell you, we're on a roll here. <laughs> <laughs> You're just knocking these down one by one. Yeah. The the. The paragraph, yeah, as I was going through the devotional, says living a spirit-filled life makes every day an adventure of faith and the miraculous. 
So what does living a spirit-filled life mean? And what does that look like? And I think you just kind of just explained that right now. Right. It's amazing. So yeah, I thought like, even on the airplane, time. there was turbulence. And I just said, stop in the name of Jesus. Peace be still. I take authority over you in Jesus name. This plane will glide smoothly. And within seconds, the plane just settled in. I mean, it was so just having that, you know, those few instances that day. And then I had a conversation with my son that day that was anointed of the Lord. So those are the kind of things that you can live daily if you're attuned to the fact that you're in partnership with god and just using the authority he's given us you experience then um they might not seem as spectacular as the parting of the red sea but to the individuals that are being ministered to yeah it is important yeah these are life-changing events And and, and i love the way i love the way it's worded in the devotional where it says you know living a spirit filled lifestyle makes every day like you just said an adventure of faith and miraculous and the miraculous right there i mean you just you know you just touched on a bunch of different things that happened which were all in one day only one day and it was an adventure i mean there you are you just landed up with this person minding my own business never even met this person you're in a plane you know you start putting these things when it happens on a daily basis for like you know obviously mama jay you i mean you been walking with the lord for so long so you know living in living in the spirit is what you do so you know the you, these little things are happening every single day but the, there are things that you do to train yourself for that chad though just as soon as you said that all of a sudden i had an image of myself way back in the early 70s when i first got filled with the holy spirit and i actually the holy spirit prompted me to do a study and for that whole summer I went through my Bible and highlighted every scripture that had to do with the thought of hear and obey. Revolutionized my life. And that's where I began to purposefully train myself to be a hearer and a doer of what I felt the Holy Spirit was quickening me to do. And so as you were saying that, all of a sudden I realized, oh my goodness, I have actually made a focused effort on that all the past four decades or however many decades that is now. And, um, so yeah, it's a work in progress. Work in you know, we progress, have to yeah. constantly, like we d- discipline ourselves at the gym or discipline ourselves with our eating or whatever else we discipline ourselves with. The same kind of thing to discipline ourselves in the spirit, to be quick to hear and obey, to be a shema. Shema. He uh, listens on purpose in order to obey. Yeah. And that I just want to touch on that one last point again that you said. It's a learned process. Yeah. And it takes it takes focus and energy. Yeah. And like you said, to get that to desire it like you did it's not when, when i said you for you it's part of your life on a daily basis but that's the fruit of four decades yeah of hearing and obeying and getting to the point where now you live in the miraculous yeah you know so for a epi conquer every community and everyone out listening to this podcast it's a it's a process that you got to desire Start developing the habit of that you know yeah and when you desire it you'll you'll seek it more and you'll develop yeah. that and you'll start to hear more yeah. and through a process of time because unfortunately nothing happens overnight as yeah. we would love it to happen but through a process of time you will start to live like it mentions yeah in the miraculous and yeah. that's what we always want to get to that's beautiful yeah and that also like you had mentioned i think earlier in this podcast to the lens that we look things through we have to learn to also see that that is the miraculous because sometimes we can get so used to this and this and that happens and we don't stop to pause and think about you know what that's actually miraculous that was god intervening (laughs) and so that we can give him the glory for it and realize that we really are in partnership with him and um, recognize it that way otherwise you take things for granted and i think that's another horrible mistake that the body of christ uh and the people of god have walked into so many times and we've done a few podcasts in the past about how god gets upset with how people so quickly forget his miracles you know i mean he'll do something and then by the afternoon they're already moaning and groaning and complaining about something else (laughs) they totally (laughs) forgot that he came through for them in the morning and in the afternoon they forgot all about it and now they're fussing about something else so to remember to look back over our day and i think that's why it's important at night or whatever to keep a journal of some of these things that god does so that when you flip back through them later you go oh yeah god thank you so much for that and thank you for this time and that you know because we do forget our forgetter works very well well i mean and you just have to go to the scriptures to see that i think we've spoken about it i mean 
the Israelites ran through a parted Red Sea. Yeah. I mean, it's it's hard to imagine that you can forget that. I know, right? I mean, but it didn't so take them long to forget that and start moaning again. Oh, Lord, where are you? What's going on? Yeah. Not with us. Why did you bring us here? <laughs> Where's our food? We're eating this nonsense. <laughs> no, I mean. You want food, I'll send you food. <laughs> Oh, wow. That's amazing. That's awesome. You know, we have a name of God here. It's Jehovah Mekedesh. I, that's how I'm going to pronounce it anyway. But it means the Lord who makes you holy. And I think that's an important part of the process too, Chad, is to remember that God is the author and finisher of our faith. He's the one that's doing a work in our lives. We can't actually do the work ourselves. We have to position ourselves so that God can do the work in and through us. But that comes out of Exodus 31, where God was actually establishing his covenant with his people. And that's where he was given Moses the Ten Commandments and writing them with the finger of God on these tablets of stone. But God was dedicating himself to the people if the people would dedicate themselves to him. And so he said, I am the Lord who makes you holy. And the word holy, I think sometimes we get all sanctimonious about it and think maybe it's wearing your clothes in a certain way and no makeup and your hair in a certain way or whatever but that's not what makes you holy holiness is really just being separated unto god so in other words you just belong to god and you are separated to live solely for him so he's the one he separated himself to dedicate himself to love us and cherish us was i mean wow that's amazing then we in like way should dedicate ourselves to be separated unto him and live solely for him as well. It's kind of like a marriage. That's what it's kind of like to live for one another, right? To, to become one. And in the same way, God wants that with us. I mean, how spectacular is that? So powerful. So powerful. Wow. Well, on that note, Mama Jay, we're going to, we're going to pivot right over to what is spiritual weapon for this well podcast. i think mine is going to be go and do i mean get up and go <laughs> <laughs> get up and do get up and go get up and get go up and, and go. do go and do <laughs> take some action steps you know <laughs> get some motion going <laughs> yeah what's yours i had uh the power of the holy spirit because mm. we see the power of the holy spirit working in and through you know Paul and all the different, all the apostles and literally in every single thing that takes place today, yeah. you can see the hand of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And it's so amazing because we have that, I just love it because we have that same yes. Holy Spirit living yeah. inside us. And it's not a diluted form or no. a less than form. Yeah, it's or that aged same, form. <laughs> yeah, it's the same powerful spirit of God. And I just love that, that you chose that as a weapon because it is a weapon. Um, to recognize his power and then get up and go do whatever it was you felt nudged to do. <laughs> yeah. And when he speaks to you, get up and go do. <laughs> yeah. And that will start training you to live that lifestyle of the miraculous every day, that adventure of faith, which is fantastic. Yep. Then our power affirmation chat, I think it would be so appropriate if we just said, I am Shema. In other words, I am one who wants to listen on purpose so that yeah. I can obey God. So I, I am Shema. I am Shema. Yeah, I like, I like that. that. That's awesome, Mama Jay. Let's do that. Okay, so how we do it, you know, drum roll on your lap, your desktop, or somebody's head next to you or whatever. <laughs> and then on the count of three, we say, shout it out. I am Shema. Do you know how it's much good. that's going to please God to hear that? Oh, yes. Like, yes, they're getting it. I'm sure he's like, uh, what do you call it? Nudging the Holy Spirit. Go, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> They're coming around. I told you they'll convince you get it. <laughs> oh my goodness. How awesome is that? Okay, everybody, drum roll. One, two, three. I am yeah. Shema. Yes, I love to hear and obey you, Lord. Mm, that's my great pleasure. Praise God. Well, Epic Conquerors, you know, this has just been so powerful. And we are so thrilled to be able to bring these podcasts to you and share our joy in God with you and partner with you in that way. And if you're struggling with anything today, just close off, put a tent over your head if you need to, or close your, put your hands over your eyes to close off.
and just tune in to the great counselor, the great yes. God, the almighty God, and just let him speak to your heart and really receive from him today the instructions for the next hour, the next day, the next week, whatever, and let him lead and guide you in that way. And just tell the devil, you turkey, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and just give yourself fully to, you know, focusing in on him. And he'll be right there. He's waiting for you. He's waiting. And realize that it's our job just to step out in faith, to hear and obey, and then to sit back and let the Lord take care of the results. Yes. Yes, fantastic. That's so awesome. Love it. Oh, yeah, this has been great. You know, I just want to take a moment too to just share about our CAM uh, mentorship membership that we are launching. It's on our website, CAM Training for You, the number for the letter U, CAM Training for You.com. And it's a place where we have live sessions as well as a library of resources and materials so that you can really develop this powerful lifestyle of walking with God and seeing the miraculous every day. And that's the goal of this mentorship is to bring like-minded, hungry believers together who want to go and grow in God and see God work in and through their everyday life and see miracles happen all the time. Go somewhere to happen in Jesus name. <laughs> so there'll be a link on the show notes here on epicwinforyou.com yep. where you can find out or go to camtrainingforyou.com. Become a part of our mentorship membership and enjoy the wonderful fellowship that we're creating in that community we encourage you to come join us all righty great time yeah that's great okay chad sadly, all right mama jay that time to say it ciao for now everybody we'll see you ciao next for time now. okay bye-bye